Hi everyone and welcome to Unit 4. We are in Mod 18 and we are talking about vision today. Here are your learning objectives and here is your vocab. Pause to write it down. Alright, so first we need to talk about the physical stimulus that your eye receives and processes. So what we see is actually a very tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So if you look over on the right, there's an image there that shows you the electromagnetic spectrum. So you have like gamma rays, you have short waves like AM waves, and then in the middle sort of is the amount that we can see. And then it's kind of magnified down below to show you that visible light spectrum. So we can just see that tiny part. Um, so there are two physical characteristics of light that you need to know because they help um, determine our experience with light and color. So the first is wavelength. So the distance from the peak of one light or sound wave, in this case light, to the peak of the next. So how far? So if you look down at the bottom, there's a shorter wavelength there. So bluish have that shorter, higher frequency wavelength, whereas the red color has a lower frequency and it has so less waves in the same amount of time. So if you look over on that visible light spectrum, the more towards the red, the lower the frequency, and then the more the other way towards the blue and the purple, the higher frequency, shorter wavelength. So another word that you need to know is hue and this is just the color that we experience so different shades of um, blue and yellow and red etc and then there's also intensity and this is the amount of energy in the light wave and this is what determines what we call brightness so how bright a color is has to do with the intensity of the color. Okay, so now let's talk about the anatomy of the eye. And we're going to kind of go in order of what happens here. So first, the light that we were just talking about, that physical wavelength, enters through the eye through the cornea. And this is like a protective layer that um, is clear and it bends um, and it bends to focus on what it needs to focus on. And then next, the light passes through the pupil. And this is a small adjustable opening in the center of the eye. And the pupil is surrounded by the iris. And this is the colored portion of the eye. And it's like a muscle that dilates or constricts depending on light. And then behind the pupil, so also behind the iris, right? is the lens and the lens is the thing that kind of changed shape so it thins out to see far away and it thickens to see close and it's changing shape to help us focus um, far away or close up and the older we are the more our lens has a harder time um, doing that especially thinning out so that's why um, as your eyes age, you might have to hold things further away from you to be able to see them clearly because it has trouble focusing back close up. Um, and then the mm -hmm. process by which the lens changes shape, so that whole process is just called accommodation. And the retina, so the next it goes to the retina, and that's in the back of the eye, if you look in our picture here. So in the back of the eye, this contains rods and cones, which help us see color, peripheral vision, black and white. And they are, they are all these, a bunch of neurons that begin processing the visual information from them. This is all just about the retina now. So on the retina, like we talked about, there are rods and cones. So rods are the receptor cells that detect black, white, and gray. So no color and they are necessary for peripheral vision and like twilight, so like seeing in the dark. So rods are good for dark, black and white, no color. Cones 
are retinal receptor cells that are concentrated near the center of the retina and they are for color. So maybe think like of a bright orange traffic cone and remember that cones are for color or CO for cones, CO for color. So they are the high detail daylight color receptors. And then the fovea is just the term we use for that highly concentrated area in the retina where all those cones are clustered. So that's like our, our um, most detailed part of our, so wherever we're, whenever we're focusing our eyes on something, our fovea is being focused there. And we can still see peripheral information, but that's coming more from rods and there are less receptors there. So next you have bipolar cells. So you can see in this image how there are bipolar cells there. So they're actually, this is kind of weird, but so the light comes through the eye, right? Through the cornea, through the pupil, and then to the back of the eye, which is the retina. And all of this is in the retina. And it has to go through the ganglion cells and the bipolar cells to get to the rods and cones. So it gets back there, and then the bipolar cells process that information. They transmit it back to the ganglion cells, and the ganglion cells see how there's like how they all kind of collect in like a bunch of wires there. So I kind of like to th it seems it looks to me like a bunch of computer wires, you know, like a desktop, and they have that hole in the desk where all the wires can go down into your eye kind of has the same thing. So bipolar cells process it to the ganglion cells, and then the ganglion cells have all those wires, and all of those wires are called the optic nerve. And they're what take that neural message, because now it's a neural message, um, to the brain. So also, because there's a bunch of wires, and it's kind of like that hole in the desk where there's no desk there, right? There is also no receptor cells right where that is. Be so, it's so that's our blind spot. Um, sometimes it's referred to as the optic disc um, or blind spot. And there are no receptor cells here. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a little trick in class to show you how to find. Next is how we process that visual information. So in the visual cortex, we have more specialized nerves. And so we have a lot of things going on for, for vision. It's very important to our survival. So nerve cells in the brain that respond to specific features, such as shape, angle, or movement. Or I like to think of it as SAM. So feature, SAM. So shape, angle, movement. So like that means we have a specialized nerve just for shape just for angle and just for movement, all different. Um, you can see that <clears throat> you really, it's weird to think about, but you see with your brain just as much as you see with your eyes. Damage to your occipital lobe can cause you to be blind. So again, we're going to talk about this parallel processing, but now in the visual sense, so parallel processing is the idea that we process many aspects of vision simultaneously. So kind of like that dual processing idea, but now we're talking specifically with vision. So we can, at the same time, we can process color, form, motion, depth, all at once. Again, just to repeat the order of things, you have light going through the cornea, then the retina processed by the rods and cones, to the bipolar cells, the ganglion cells, through that optic nerve, then the thalamus, and then the visual cortex. So there are two theories you need to know for seeing color. The first is Young-Helmholtz trichromatic theory. I'll try saying that three times fast. So this is the idea that the retina contains three different color receptors, red, green, and blue. That's it. And when they are stimulated in any sort of combination, you can make any color. So I'm not someone who works a stage, but if you, if you know anything about stage lighting, red, green, and blue 
can make any color. And I know this is very confusing because those of you who remember like elementary school and you mix colors, right? You wouldn't be mixing those colors. But light works differently than paint. That's a totally different <coughs> thing because it's about light reflecting and combining to make different colors. So I've included this image here just to kind of show you um, the different colors and how they would combine to make different things. Again, doesn't work with paint, it works with light. So um, this theory kind of explains our color blindness. So most people with color deficient vision are not actually color blind. They typically lack a function of like their red receptors or their green color cones um, or sometimes both. And so what they can see is limited by if you take red out of this spectrum, now they can't see colors that need red receptors. You can do a little test of yourself over here and see if you can read the numbers in those bubbles. Interesting fact that dogs lack receptor cells for red, so that gives them limited dichromatic vision instead of tri. Okay, the second theory you need to know is opponent process theory. So this is the idea that we have opposing colors. So red and green, yellow and blue, white and black. So they're opposing on the um, color wheel. So if something is turned on by green, then red is shut off. There's no red involved. And yellow and blue, same idea, black and white, same idea. So blue and red travel in separate channels. So blue and red can travel at the same time. And that gives us like the reddish blue magenta colors. But you can't have blue and yellow firing at the same time. Or you can't have green and red firing at the same time. You can have yellow and green, blue and red. You get the idea. Um, and this theory explains why we see after images. And I'll show you an example of this in a second. So after you tire your neural response to one color, let's say you look at something green for a really long time, that one fatigues, and then you look away and you see red spots because the green has fatigued and the red fires um, in, in its place. So currently it's believed that these two theories, the trichromatic theory and the opponent process theory work together to explain how we see color. So if you stop and pause this, after I explain it, and you, scut you have to stare at the white dot in the center, both eyes focused on that white dot for 30 seconds, and make sure it really is 30 seconds for it to work, and then have out a piece of like blank white paper or a white binder cover or something, and look at that white or a white wall, and then you should see the American flag in its normal colors. And that is an after image. So where the green is, you'll fire red. Where the black is, you'll fire white, right? Where the um, black stars are, you'll fire white. And where the yellow is, you'll fire blue. Okay, so takeaways. We do not see the world as it is. We see it as we need to see it. In fact, I didn't explain this yet, but when we look at a green leaf, it is not actually it is not actually green. We are seeing green because it is the only color that's bouncing back off of the leaf. All those other colors are being absorbed into the leaf. And so the green bounces back, and so we see green. So we don't actually see the world as it is. It's bizarre. You should know the order of visual processing. I went over it a couple times in this video. Our brain processes multiple aspects of vision at once, parallel processing. And make sure you know those two theories of visual processing and seeing color and that know that both work together. So that sums up our mod 18 vision and I will see you guys